psychrometrics. That's a funny word, isn't it? You can look in the encyclopedia online. Encyclopedia, typically you have your phone. It's easy to check. Wikipedia and uh, psychrometrics. And you type it in and you just start reading. Uh-oh, not to be confused. Hey, that's why I'm trying to look this up. I'm typically confused about what a word means. But not to be confused with psychometrics which is a discipline of psychology and education. Psychrometry redirects here. It is not to be confused with psycho, psycho, psychrometry. Okay, now I'm really confused. What's the difference between this word and this word? One letter. One letter tucked in the middle. That's it. So first time, and, and guess what engineers do when they study moist air? They don't even like to say that whole word. So what do they do? They abbreviate it. And we're going to have a chart. It's the psychrometrics chart. But guess what the slang, the, the engineer says? Oh, go get the psych chart. What? Psych chart? What are you going to check? And then it, it made me think of things like movies and you know, like Psycho. I've never seen this movie, 1960-something slasher, thriller, I don't know, in the archives somewhere. Like, ah, a horror flick. Uh, or I've never seen this TV series. Some students have seen it. How many students have seen the reruns? One, two? Yeah. It's like, but it's easy to get confused. One letter, psychrometrics, is the study of moist air. What is psychometrics? It's a discipline, a study of psychology, some education. So, clicker question. Blank is the study of moist air. And must be somebody clicking in from outside the room. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And here's another question. Blank is, is a discipline of psychology and education. All right, some people are having fun with me. They're not going to allow me to get 100% correct, no matter what. <laughs> or somebody's just clicking A. So the etymology, oh, another word. Are we in English class? No, that's the study of the origins of words. So the etymology of the word psychrometrics with that R. So we're looking at the study of moist air. Do you think it comes from some Latin words, some Italian words, some Greek words, some Russian words, some German words? And uh, do you think it comes from Latin where you're doing psycho meaning crazy and Etrix meaning acting, crazy acting maybe, or Italian psych meaning dark and hometrix meaning cold, or whatever this word is, Greek I guess, meaning cold and metron meaning measure, or Russian psycho meaning cold and metron meaning food, or German psycho meaning crazy and Eratrix meaning air, crazy air. I don't know. You take your pick. We're having a little fun, right? It actually is uh, Greek, meaning something about cold air, studying of cooler air. Something special happens to moist air when you cool it. Water condenses. That's what happens. And so, and we'll talk about that. Let's press on. Did I grade it? I forgot. Did I grade it? There. Oh, come on. That was an unfair question. So we're going to talk about dry air. We're going to talk about saturated air and then moist air. Well, dry air is just like you might think. There's no H2O V, vapor. Uh, is the air in this room dry air? No. You have to go to desert. And then you start to feel it in your skin. So dry, dries out. Or in the winter time, it's much drier than in the summer around here. Hence, sometimes people have dry skin in the winter. Saturated air. Well, it's got the maximum amount of H2O vapor. It can't handle any more. It's saturated. 
all right? Then moist is somewhere in between. And we'll talk, that's the room air right now. It's not saturated air, it's not dry, it's somewhere in between. Okay, we're going to be dealing with ideal gases. That's the whole chapter, ideal gas mixtures. So the, uh, the air, we're going to treat dry air as a mixture by itself. Even though it's a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide and argon, they just lump it and call dry air with the one molar mass of 28.97 kilograms per kilomole. And then the mixture is you add H2O vapor to it. So you have two components. That's the way we like to analyze it. Engineers like to analyze moist air. Two ideal gases mixed. They both stay behaving as ideal gas. And one is water vapor and the other is dry air. When we talk about the density, rho from the gas equation is the pressure the molar mass divided by R bar T. Does that equation look good? Sure. So, uh, I already answered that. This is true, isn't it? And so, a lot of times we use density as well as specific volume. All right, let's go to a clicker question. For air, how does the mass density, rho, change if only the temperature is increased? Leave pressure alone. Leave the composition of the gas alone. It's just going to change temperature. How does density change if temperature goes up? We looked at this equation. There's temperature. Here's density. If I leave the pressure alone, leave the mixture molar mass alone, R bar is always the same. But if temperature goes up, temperature goes up, what happens to rho? will go down, so it will decrease. Right? Right. Another question for air. So it's not dry air, it's not saturated air, let's just say it's moist air. How does mass density change if only the molar mass is increased? Somehow you're able to change the molar mass. And we just go ahead and look at it. And so, yeah, the, the, it's, it's proportional to the molar mass. Now, the molar mass of the mixture is a sum of the mole fractions times the molar mass of each individual component. And so, normally, we have a very large number, uh, maybe 98%, 99%, 0.99 and uh, is dry air, and the dry air molar mass is 28.97. Okay, that would leave 0.01 plus 0.01. See, the mole fractions have to add up to 100 times the molar mass of uh, water vapor. Hey, what was that H2O molar mass? Well, you get, for every oxygen, 16. For every hydrogen, 1. So it's around 18. You can look it up, 18.01 or 18 something. Uh, so what happens is, is as you increase, as I increase the Y of the H2O vapor, what's happening? The mole fraction of the dry air has to go down. Can you tell what the molar mass of the mixture is doing as I put more water vapor in it? It's not changing temperature, not changing pressure the mixture molar mass goes down. I'm adding a lighter component. Water vapor is lighter. All right, let's continue on. You have one cubic meter of dry air. Does it have more oxygen than one cubic meter of saturated air at the same temperature and pressure? What do you mean saturated air? That means a lot of water in it, right? So let me just let you think about that. I have one cubic meter. One time it's filled with just dry air. One time it's filled with saturated air. This one um, was a challenging question. But, you know, I think I went to the FE exam and I grabbed the question. I think this was off the FE exam. Makes you think a little bit. But it's very practical. How many people had uh, parents, grandparents, older folks that uh, 
when later in life they uh, had to go around with a bottle, oxygen bottle for breathing, or anybody known anybody that moved to a dry climate. Uh, sometimes they do it for the winter, but sometimes they do it just to breathe easier, breathe, you know, uh, less humidity. Uh, maybe you felt it sometimes. Your, your lungs are too good. You wouldn't feel it yet, but uh, you could feel uh, harder to breathe when it's very humid air. It's harder to get that oxygen. That's what you're breathing air for. It's not for the water vapor. You're breathing it for the oxygen. And the older you get, the harder the lungs have a hard time getting that oxygen. Hence, they have bottles and people change where they live because of that. Anyway, so if I have a, a, a cubic meter of just uh, dry air, it has a lot of oxygen in it. But if I have the same cubic meter, and then I start pushing in more uh, H2O, what is that? More water vapor, then guess what I have less of? It sort of displaced it. It moved it out of the neighborhood, pushed it out of the neighborhood into the adjacent cubic meters of surrounding. You're going to have less oxygen for the same temperature and pressure. All right, so... One cubic meter dry air has more oxygen than one cubic meter saturated air, same temperature and pressure. Professor, I don't like these questions. Okay, fine. Should I not talk about them? Oh, boy. Yeah, the molar mass of dry air is 28.97. Now, molar mass of moist air, that is 2% water vapor. What do you mean by 2%? So Y of H2O is 0.02. The Y of the dry air is 0.98 of my mixture. So what is the uh, motor mass now of that moist air? Is it less than 28.97, equal to 28.97, greater than, or I need, hey, don't look at this. That's the answer. That's supposed to cover that up. All right. Hey, what's going on? So the water vapor is lighter. And so as the fraction of water vapor goes up, the, 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 the mole fraction of the dry air goes down. In the averaging, this is larger. This is smaller. Hence, this becomes smaller. It, it's less. It, all right, maybe I'm over too many too many questions today. No, well, we covered a big part already of this chapter, and you, in your mind, get get set that you have dry air. What does that mean? If there's no water vapor, the mole fraction is approximately 79.21. So we use that quickly uh, as a good approximation. You'll see that in a lot of engineering calculations. Dry air is 79.21. This is the partial pressure of nitrogen, partial pressure of the oxygen. That's your molar mass. Okay. Saturated air. Well, let's go down here to, uh, well, saturated air. We're going to talk more about it, but what's that pressure, the partial pressure of the water, it'd be the maximum it could be. It's the saturation pressure. This is the same pressure in the first thermo table, A2, that you were introduced to, the steam table. That's the saturation pressure at that temperature. Hence, as the temperature goes up, guess what PSAT does? Goes way up, and hot air can hold a lot of water. Hot, warm air, warm, saturated air has a high partial pressure of the water in it. So you could calculate that partial, uh, the mole fraction. Uh, you could calculate then the, the partial pressure of the dry air. You just subtract the atmospheric pressure from the, the partial pressure of the water vapor. Um, mole fractions, you can calculate. Moist air, that's where we're going to spend more time studying. And it's some fraction of the maximum. So it's not going to be 100%. Oh, that's a good definition of relative humidity. We're going to get there, but not today. And then you just have the partial pressure, dry air, etc. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm going to give you a little quiz and then we'll call it a day. Thank you for your attention.